Hello and welcome to my presentation about the chemical characterization of gas phase and condensed organics on a molecular composition level by a next generation PTRMS instrument. Let's start this presentation by having a look at the traditional PTRMS ion chemistry and the included limited H3 plus ionization pathways. In a traditional PTRMS we produce our H3 plus primary ions out of pure water vapor in our hollow cathode ion source. These H3 plus primary ions react then at a very defined reaction rate with volatile organic compounds with a proton affinity of higher than that of water. The resulting protonated VOCs are then detected by means of mass spectrometry. To enable this reduced ionization pathways, we have to apply a constant DC drift field, a constant temperature, and we need to operate at reduced pressures in the range of a few millibars. Only under these conditions we can make sure that there is only one single ion molecule collision that results into protonation of a VOC within the approximately 100 microseconds of reaction time. And this is what we call a clean ion chemistry. And of course we want to maintain this clean ion chemistry for our next generation PTRMS instrument. We call this next generation PTRMS instrument Fusion PTRTOF. Fusion PTRTOF uses a new fast SRI ion source, SRI for selective reagent ions, so we are able to produce uh, several primary ions. We inject these primary ions into a new radio frequency reaction chamber that uses a series of ring electrodes where we add DC and R radio frequency voltages. In addition, we have an actively pumped ion funnel to reduce any possible chemical background levels. And at the end, we have our PTRTOF 10K with highest mass resolving power to, that allows us to identify all possible isobaric peaks. Therefore, this instrument fusions the high sensitivities of a near atmospheric pressure chemical ionization mass spectrometer with the simple ion chemistry scheme of a PTRMS. Now let's have a look at the parts of pieces of this new Fusion PTRTOF instrument. Let's start with the fast SRI ion source. This new ion source is more than twice as efficient than a traditional Ionicon ion source, but maintains the same multiple month stability. In addition, the new ion source is significantly cleaner than the old one in respect to neutral and ionic interferences. For example, we have less than 2% of O2 interferences with this new ion source. The new source supports currently four primary ions. This is H3 plus, soft ammonium adduct ionization, NO2, NO plus and O2 plus. In addition, we are able to switch very quickly between various primary ion modes. In the figure to the right, we see example for D5 siloxanes using H3 plus mode and soft ammonium addict ionization. And as you can see, we can typically switch between those modes within around one second. In addition, Fusion PTRTOF excels in sensitivity and limits of detection. As you can see in this figure, Fusion PTRTOF reaches sensitivities in the range of 25,000 counts per parts per billion, for in ca this case benzene, a molecular with a rather low reaction rate constant, and up to around 80,000 counts for the ketone octanone. And at the same time, we achieve limits of detection of less than 1 pptv for only one second of data acquisition time. Let's now divide all these signals by the reaction weight signal to get information on the transmission of the instrument. In this case we can see if the instrument is capable to detect signals of unknown sensitivity simply based on the reaction rate constant. And when we look at this resulting transmission function as a, as a function of mass over charge, we see that it's nicely connected 
uh, there are no big offsets for the individual ions and we don't see a clear cutoff towards lower or higher mass of our charges. The next step is the linearity range. Of course, Fusion PTR TOF can measure uh, the signals very linearly. In this case, we have injected our multi-component standard with around 12 VOCs. We have dynamically diluted it in the range from 50 to 20 ppvv. And as you see, we see a nice linear response for all the signals in the gas standard uh, up to a total VOC, in this case of 190 ppvvs. Now let's have a look at the upper linearity range. In this case, we have injected limonene uh, from a gas cylinder uh, and we detect up to two and a half million counts linearly that with corresponds to around 35 ppbv. And for higher count weights, our ADC counting system is saturated and we therefore lose linearity. But of course, with fusion PTRTOF, we can always switch off the radio frequency and operate the instrument in standard DC only mode. Then we still have a very sensitive instrument with only about a factor 5 less sensitivity. But we remain all the advantages of a standard PTRMS. And in this case, we can measure up to 150 ppbv of limonene directly linearly without ADC counting system saturation. Humidity dependency is also a frequently asked topic when it comes to PTRMS. In the following, I present data with an E of Rn, this is the electric field of a number uh, density in the reaction range chamber of 100 Townsend. This is a moderate to soft ionization settings to reduce ionic fragmentation. And at this moderate to soft ionization settings, we have varied the humidity of the sample by continuously sampling our calibration gas standard. And as we know, in the range from 100, uh, 0 to 100 percent relative humidity at room temperature, our signal for benzene and all the aromatic species show a clear e humidity dependency as a function of the proton affinity. So at 100 percent relative humidity, we only detect approximately half of the concentration of benzene. Other compounds like ketones, monotopines, alcohols, etc. show an almost humidity independent signal. Now let's compare this to a standard PTRMS operated at 100 Townsend. In green we see now the signal from a standard PTRMS for benzene, whereas in black the one for the fusion PTRMS. And it's very comparable. And when we look at the red line, this is a measurement at 180 Townsend. And this is also very obvious. We need at least 160, 170, 180 Townsend to measure with the PTRMS humidity independent. This means that we have a dominated H3 plus primary ion without any water clusters. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we don't have a significant amount of fragmentation. And at 160 to 180 Townsend, fragmentation is always severe and includes the breakup of the carbon backbone of molecules. Therefore, we try to limit our ionization to softer settings like 100 to 120 Townsend. But now, let's come back to the topic of the AAAR conference, this is particulate organics. Many of you know the chemical analysis of aerosol online or Caron particle inlet that we offer for standard PTMS instruments. This Caron complies of a gas phase denuder that very efficiently strips away gases but still transmit particles an aerodynamic lens system that collimates the particles to the center where it gets subsampled and uh, this enriched particle beam is then thermodesorbed at moderate temperatures of only around 140 160 degrees Celsius and at reduced pressures of only a few millibars. And then this now evaporated organics are detected with our PTR MS systems. Now, in the Fusion Edition, we skip the aerodynamic lens system, but still we, uh, retain 
the advantages of a moderate temperature and reduced pressure evaporation. The advantage of skipping the aerodynamic lens system is that the size dependency of sampling particles is now not any more limited by the aerodynamic lens system. With the aerodynamic lens system we typically have a stable response from 100-120 nanometers up to a few micrometers and a 50% response at around 80-90 to 90 nanometers. Now with the Caron for with the fusion addition of Caron, the limiting factor for particle size transmission is the charcoal denuder. And at the current operation set point of 400 milliliter sample flow, the denuder is able to transmit, in this case levoglucosan particles, near constantly down to a size of around 55 nanometers and we still see 50% of the aerosol sample at around 25 nanometer particle size. To study the performance of the fusion addition of Coran in more detail, we have produced some secondary organic aerosol in our aerosol fluid tube. So we injected around 25 parts per billion of limonene into the aerosol flow tube with a typical flow of 1 liter per minute zero air at 50% relative humidity. Together with, oz with ozone, we let it erect and produce secondary organic aerosol that we sample with Caron Fusion PTRTOF and an SMPS system. In this aerosol flow tube we have generated between 80 to 90 micrograms of limonene SOA at a typical size bin of around 90 to 100 nanometers. But now let's have a look at the resulting mass spectrum. So in H3 plus mode again at an EOFORN of 100 Townsend, it's uh, soft to moderate ionization energies. We see a really nice mass spectrum containing a series of monomer ions, some ionic fragments of course, and also a small dimer signal. We also need to take into account at 100 Townsend we know that we lose on average between 1 to 2 neutral H2O molecules per ionic fragmentation. But the advantage of the H0 plus mode is of course that it's a very, very quantitative mode. So we can have a look at the generated uh, concentration and compare it with SMPS mass concentrations to double check that we evaporate all of the molecules. To get a more detailed insight into the mass spectrum and the chemical composition, of course, we can switch to soft ammonium adduct ionization mode. So we reduce the FON a bit to 60 Townsend to produce stable adduct cluster with ammonia. Now, the monomer fraction is even better visible. We still have some interferences in a 1 to 5 percent of proton uh, transfer reactions, but also the dimer. Uh, the dimer fraction of the resulting uh, evaporated aerosol is significantly more pronounced. And when we look at the mass spectrum in a little bit more detail, we can even see a trimer fraction with mass concentrations of less than 200 picogram per cubic meter or 10 parts per quadrillion. And again, this mass spectrum is only an average of 2 to 3 minutes. So we are very, very sensitive with this fusion PTR-TOF instrument. Another metric that's very important when it comes to the detection of organic particles is of course the instrumental response function. So we measured our limonene SOA and switched the instrument to HEPA background mode. Now we monitored the decay uh, by of the fusion PTR-TOF instrument for the most prominent monomer signals plus a dimer signal. And as expected, we see the quickest 104E decays for semi-volatile species like C10 H1603 with less than 10 seconds and the slowest 104E decay times for very low volatile species like the dimer C19 H3008 with around 40 seconds. And this already brings me to the conclusion. Fusion PTR-TOF combines a novel fast SOI ion source with a radio frequency reaction chamber and a high resolution TOF-MS. 
the instrument reaches unprecedented sensitivities and limits of detection for a PTRMS while simultaneously conserving a simplified ion chemistry scheme. Caron for fusion is able to transmit and evaporate particles up to the trimer range of limonene ozonolysis SOA and the response times to this SOA are in a sub-minute range. Thank you very much for your attention.